Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester 2, routing and switching essentials. This is chapter 6, static routing. This is section 6.4, configure, summary and floating static routes. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to configure an IPv4 and IPv6 summary network address to reduce the number of routing table updates. Configure floating static routes to provide a backup connections. Route summarization. Route summarization, also known as route aggregation, is a process of advertising a contiguous set of addresses as a single address with a less specific, shorter submit mask. Classless interdomain routing is a form of router summarization and is synonym to with the term supernetting. CIDR, classless interdomain routing, ignores the limitation of classful boundaries and allows summarization with masks that are smaller than the default classful mask. This type of summarization helps reduce the number of entries in the routing updates and lowers the number of entries in the local routing table. So how do we do the summarization or calculate a summary route? We have to list the network in, in question in binary format. So imagine that we have four networks, custom A, B, C, and D. So what we have to do, this network we have to convert it, the decimal, into binary. So after we convert it into binary for all all networks, okay, uh, a shorter way would be to just not do the, the, the ones that they are actually the same. If you if you look 192.168, it's, it's the same on all four of them. You don't have to convert that into binary. But anyway, this is the, the method until you become more professional at it. And then we after we list them in the binary format, we have to count the number of far left matching bits. So we go from the left towards the right and we count how many bits are exactly the same. So we counted here, if you say the first octet will be 8 bits, another 8 bits, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So 20 bits are exactly the same. This will identify the prefix length or subnet mask for the summarized routes. So copy the matching bits and then add zeros bit to the rest of the addresses to determine the subnet prefix. So here we have, these are our copy, like the matching bits, you have to copy them. Even if there's a one or something here, you need to copy that as well. And then forward slash 20 is our subnet mask or prefix. So creating a smaller routing table makes the routing table lookup process more efficient. There's a few routes to search summary classes into domain routing can be configured using static routes if one static route can be used instead of multiple static route the size of routing table is reduced in many cases a single static route can be used to represent a dozen hundreds or even thousands of routes so for example here we have our routing routes that we create in a static route so quite a few yeah we have ip route 172.16.0.0 mask and then the next hop IP address. So you remember what was this kind of, what kind of static route? So the next hop static route. Okay, so we have, uh, what many? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six static routes. So all of these, we could have summarized it into all, in onto, into one summary route only. So instead of advertising six, we can get rid of all of them and just create one, not advertise, but create a standard static route for only one. So summarize all these six routes into one or six destination, remote destination into one uh, summary route. IP route 172.16.0.0.255.248.0.0 and then the exit or next hop address is 172.19.0.2. Summarizing IPv6 network addresses, aside from the fact that IPv6 addresses are 128 bit long and are written in hexadecimal, Summariz summarizing IPv6 address is actually similar to that summarizing of, I of IPv4 address. It just requires a few extra steps due to the abbreviated IPv6 addresses and hex conversion. Multiple static IPv6 routes can be summarized into a single static IPv6 route, IPv6 route if the destination networks are contiguous and can be summarized into a single network address. The multiple static routes all use the same exit interface or next hop IPv6 address. So there are seven steps to summarize IPv6 network into single IPv6 prefix. Step one, list the network addresses, prefixes, and identify the part of where the address differs. 
then expand the IPv6 it is a, if it's abbreviated convert the different section from hex to binary count the number of far left matching bits to determine the prefix length for the summary root copy the matching bits and then add zero bits to determine the summarized network address prefix convert the binary section back to hex and append the prefix of the summary root okay so imagine that we have these ipv6 roots yeah so four of them and we want to summarize them now first hex that is same second hex that is same third hex that is same fourth hex that is different so all we have to do is convert that fourth hex that compress zeros back right so make sure that we put them in the uncompressed format so we put the four zeros uh, sorry the three zeros are compressed then we convert that that hex that we convert it into binary so all of them into binary then we will see where the matching bits are one hex that is 16 bits so that's 16 plus 16 that's 32 that's 48 and we start counting how many bits are the same 48 49 50 51 52 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 okay so uh what was it i don't know 61 i think yeah there we go 61 so 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 13 bits are the same so 61 bits so add the zero bits at the end and then we can convert that so those addresses the summary address for that is going to be the address that you see on the screen forward slash or prefix 61 okay so get rid of all the static roots and create one only one static root okay let's do one one example in the in the notepad yeah let me open the notepad and we take one example a summary on ipv6 some different ipv6 addresses say 2001 uh, db8 acad and uh, say uh, a1 and colon colon uh, colon colon 64 right and say like this yeah uh, two three and say we take zero yeah so we take zero okay now we have four ipv6 addresses i'm going to take one more example after this yeah so i don't want to put too much time on here but let's go for it so now we have to look okay where do the differences they start so this this 16 bit or hex that is the same so we don't have to convert that in binary this is the same and this is the same and up to here are the same so first thing that you need to do you need to remember to uncompress it because by default the ipv6 is going to be compressed all right so we put zero there just so we know even though it's not playing part in there and the two zeros here so here we have two zeros remember that yeah because i got students that forget the compressed format and two zeros so up to here they're all the same right we, so we don't really need to convert back to uh, this uh, binary anything up to there now all we have to do is convert the zero into binary that's four bits yeah in the binary so uh here zero in the binary is zero 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 four bits and then compress the uh, sorry the convert in binary the one two and three so one is here that's one that's two and that's three but we change this to zero and then one and then we start counting right how many bits are the same so that's 16 bits the same another 16 that's 32 that's 48 bits are the same this zero represents four bit so that's 52 and another four bit that's 56 another four bit that's 60 and then we go here right so it's up to here 60 and then 61 62 so 62 bits on all all of the dresses are the same so 62 and then we write down the address up to here was the same yeah so we write this back and then we put the, the the rest so we gotta be it's gonna be zero yeah because this is exactly the same so that's your that's your compressed uh, sorry not compressed but summarized ipv6 address get rid of the leading zero so we have to get rid of that and that's a compressed format as well right so if for example i give you another address say 2001 uh, db8 uh, and then uh, say a a a 
AD, right? Forward slash, uh, no, uh, say uh, like it was before, A1, A1, hold on, for 64, forward slash 64, like this. Okay, so now it's uh, AB, AC, AD, right? So these are, these are addresses that we want to confer or summarize them, right? So the difference, we need to find the difference, right? So we have to first uncompress them, yeah? So put this uncompressed, oh, not that bit, there, right? So up to here is the same. So first hexadet, the hexadet is the same, second hexadet is the same, and this, this hex digit is the same in all of them. Now we find the difference, right? So he, up to here, the full network are the same. All we have to do is convert this A, B, C, and D into binary. So we do it same as what we did here, yeah? So we do it like this. A, A is what in binary? Do you remember? One, zero, one, zero. That's A in binary. Now if you need the B was one, zero, one, one. That's 11. So that's B. 12 for C is one, one, zero, zero. And then for D, which is 13, A, B, C, D, 13 is 12 plus one. So zero, one, like that. So that's converted into here, yeah? If you now, up to there, it's all the same. And then one more bit is the same for all of them, yeah? So up to this bit. So when we count, that's 16 plus 16, that's 32, plus four bits, that's 36, plus this bit here, that's 37. So 37 bits, the prefix is 37. So 16 and 16, the 32, plus four, 36, and this bit is the same, 37. And then we convert it back to, to hexadecimal. Put it like this. And then we have to count this bit. Because this bit represents eight, so it's gonna be A, eight, and then the rest are zeros. Floating static routes. I can reach the headquarters router using 10.0.0.0 LAN using the private wide array network link. I'm using the IGRP to exchange routes between the sites. So this is what the branch says. Okay, well, I'm using private wide area network to reach the headquarters 10.0.0.0. However, if the link ever fails, I will use the floating static route back up to the internet as a backup. Since the IGRP has an administrative distance of 90, I will configure the static route with a higher value. So for example, IPv6 route and the network in question. So this is the network in question. And then we're using the serial zero zero. So we go into this in interface, and as long as this administrative distance is higher than EIGRP, configuring a static, a floating static route on uh, 2R3, so IP route, so any network, we're going to 172.16.22, so we're going to the words R2, that's our default route. And then we configure another default route, but with a higher static route, uh, sorry, higher administrative distance, which says, okay, well, if that fails, then I'm going to use this path towards 10, 10, 10, 2, which is root of three's IPv6, uh, sorry, IPv4 address. So verifying the routing table of R1 for only the primary best route is on the routing table. The backup route with a higher administrative distance is not in the routing table. It will not show there. If you to verify a trace route 192.168.2.1, so to get to this destination from router one, then the path should go first to router two. So it's going from router one to router two, and then from router two to router three. So two two, and then 192.168.1.1, which is this interface, and then to the destination. If the primary fa path fails, so for example, we shut down, we simulate a router two failure, then we go to the interface S00, we shut that down as well, so we pretty much router 2 is gone. And we go back to router 1 and show IP root. Now in the routing table will be towards the router 3, 10, 10, 10, 2 with the administrative distance of 5. So when we do trace route, now it's going to go straight to 10, 10, 10, 2. If the link comes back up, the backup route is removed and the primary route with a lower default AD or administrative distance of one is reinstalled in the routing table. 
Thank you very much for watching this section 6.4 configuring summary and floating static routes. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnichi. Next video 6.5 troubleshooting static and default route issues. Bye bye.